Hello, welcome back. As you can see, I've started the trailer, the crane through our trailer, and <laughs> to be honest, it's it's all but finished. It needs uh, needs painting, of course. Where I'm up to is basically finishing off, finishing it off. I wanted to do the trailer in two videos, but it really doesn't lend itself to that so I want to do the whole thing in one uh, in one go and it's all, it's all pretty much all finished as you can see and I'll go through what I've done there's a lot of discrepancies on the instructions that you might be interested in on page one of the instructions the first thing you find is B40 here this piece this piece go together with that stiffener, uh, steel strip, steel stiffener, and there's also a roller there for the the cable to go through, the uh, tow cable to go through, <clears throat> and it's basically this piece here, these three pieces, one, two, and three. But the roller, which is B40, which is on there just there you can just see it isn't on the instructions it is on the on the sprue but it's not on the instructions as I say the number on that is B40 and it's easy enough to find it, it is there but they've not put why I don't know they've not put it on the instructions the other piece is B36 which these two pieces join together which is B52 and then the, the, the assembly you've already made so it goes like this and on the end there you can just about see a little piece sticking out doesn't doesn't appear anywhere in, on the instructions this is page one so it can't do and what it is it's a cross member there you can see I've actually written B36 on it I didn't find it until after I'd got the whole assembly on and the, the swan neck fastened to the trailer. But it goes in there. If you miss it like I did, you can, with a bit of jiggery pokery, get it in and glue it in place. But it seemed odd that there was nothing there to, to support those two pieces. So in real life, there'd be a cross piece there. It's in there now. As I say, it's on the sprue, but it's not on the instructions. So we're moving on from there, um, it tells you to build the, the the landing legs, which are pretty sturdy obviously, it's a 62 ton trailer, it, it, it needs a, a fair old set of legs to hold it up. It says no cement on these little pieces where it goes in and out, and what I thought is, if you look at the, the, the trailer when it's coupled to the unit on the paint diagram for example the landing legs are on the floor which is a bit weird as you can see the landing legs are level with the road which is a bit weird you would never drive a vehicle in that situation well I say that a mate of mine once did I mean <laughs> in the compound that he was driving round in there were speed humps he only got as far as one speed hump got into quite a lot of trouble actually for knocking both legs off the trailer but that's another story. So these needed to be, um, in real life, when it's running, they're up here somewhere. For the sake of this kit, I've put it to about there. So it's, it's off the ground um, with a reasonable sort of clearance. And to do that, you have to perform a little bit of jiggery pokery. And what I've done is I've cut these two bars these two here, I've cut them short and made new pins to go through them onto, onto the supports on the chassis. To do that however, you can't put any glue on any of these parts. It has to move for, back and forth so that you can line it all up. So where it says no, no cement on just one part, I haven't put any cement on any of the parts, glued these to the, the, the hinges 
to the cross member and then allowed everything to move back and forth so I can line it all up and it, it's worked out quite well to be fair as you can see So that's page one, set, step one of the trailer. The rest of it so far, really very easy stuff. Building the, the subframe for the trailer. These two pieces, P80, B, B1 and B2, are these two here. Now you might be able to see there's, a, there's an awful ripple in one of them. Um, they are extremely delicate. So I decided not to put them in until I'd built everything else and stopped flinging it around and putting other stuff on it. It turns out that was a good idea because even when I put it in right as a, literally the very last thing that I glued onto this trailer, and I don't know if you can see it, there's, it's, it's got damage there, and there's a couple of other ripples in it that, that don't look particularly attractive. I might be able to push them out and straighten it out, but my advice to you would be to leave those two till the very last. Also, when I've put them in, I've painted everything underneath them. So that you don't, it, it paints properly, you don't, um, you don't get any shadows underneath and any yellow plastic showing through underneath there. So, I mean, if, whether you do that or not is entirely up to you guys. But that's what I've done, I've painted it underneath. So all of this here has been painted underneath and all of this, yeah? So as I say, really quite easy with the, the, the chassis members there. Going on to step three. Again, more cross members, an air tank that goes in there and the long chassis rails that go on there. All dead simple, all fits together really nicely. You've then got, as I've men already mentioned, very, very little on these um, these instruction pages. I think I wonder whether it's to make it look bulkier or not. But literally, a whole step is just to put four pieces together, six pieces together, three on each on each side. This piece is the piece that I've cut off. You see, it says cut off a quarter of an inch, which I've done. But there was, there's a photograph of this and it's the, the piece I've cut off is there. And put a new pin, a new steel pin through there and then fasten it all together on the, on the chassis. Moving on to section five, again very little on it. And this puts the, 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 the cross member that carries the axles and it's a st sturdy old beam and when you think about it this carries it, it carries the rocker suspension and it carries eight wheels to, to hold the trailer so it, and it's on a central point so you need a sturdy old piece of kit there and that's what it is that sits in on there and it shows you how to build it up and to put the end pieces on it. It also shows you on this section to make the castle for the, uh, the, the fifth wheel, the kingpin, and to put the feet on the landing legs. Again, all simple enough stuff. Be a three and a half inch kingpin on that with the, with the weight of that trailer. So you wouldn't be able to put it on a normal tractor unit. Moving on to, oh, done that bit. Turning over the page, simple again stuff, uh, putting the, the rocker axles together and assembling the wheels. The rocker axles I've assembled and put on the, on the trailer as you can see and they were, they're quite simple, they're pretty basic stuff really and glued on, there's not a lot I can say about that. The feet for the the landing legs, again, fairly simple stuff. The wheels go together really nicely. They're all on there, ready for painting. There's not a lot I can tell you about those. 
so, as I say, simple stuff and moving over. It then says to put the, the wheels on. You're not going to do that. You need to paint the wheels separate. Well, I need to paint the wheels separately and then put the tyres on. It all looks nice and neat and then put them on the, on the trailer. There's another air tank to go on, simple enough. A couple of toolboxes, one on each side. I haven't put the handles on yet. Um, they go on on here. They're extremely fragile and I think paint, whilst painting it and handling it, I would break them. So I've left them off and I might change them to, to steel handles. What I've done on the front here these two pieces, B35, 34 and 35, are these two pieces here. Oh, sorry. These two pieces here. And what I've done is I've cut them in half, take the piece out the set, uh, a section out the centre, so that I can put the electrical wiring in. These two JST connectors will take the, the Susie's. One for the, uh, the, the constant lights, the running lights and the, and the rear lights and one for the flashing lights, indicators and the like. They go through, straight through the castle that holds the, the kingpin, come out the other side as you can see and run down inside the chassis, the trailer chassis all the way along. They then come down to uh, a switch and a junction box that uh, will eventually go on there after it's been painted. So, um, as you can see, all the wires are in there. There's a lot of wires on this. Two switches, one for the flashing unit and one for the the constant lights. So that's that's all goes on, on uh, in underneath there. Get more back to more of that in a minute or two. These two little um, boxes simple enough onto the onto the side there in real life there's an air brake goes on one of these and I may fashion one out of uh, a, a piece of PVC rod but there's definitely a brake goes on which would be the trailer brake moving on I think that's all there is on there to step eight there are Again, assembling wheels, two spare wheels to go on it. They both go underneath here, according to the, the, the diagram. When I build these kits, I always try and research them as much as I can. There are very few pictures of these, these trailers or videos of these trailers. There are a few out there, but not very many at all. And uh, probably the reason for that is he only built 125 of them so <laughs> there's not going to be a huge amount but anyway in real life one wheel goes under here and the other wheel goes on top of the tra uh, uh, the swan neck there where the, the, the hoist is if you've ever driven a low loader and you've got the wheel, the spare wheel slung underneath it, you'll, if you're going to punch it, it, when I first started driving, if you got to punch it, you not only had to get the spare wheel out, you had to repair the puncher in the one you, you, you put a hole in. But anyway, getting the spare wheel out of there, when you've only got very limited ground clearance, is a bloody nightmare, especially if it's, if, if it's loaded, and if you've got a lot of weight on there. So what most people do, sensibly is put one tyre at least on top of here. I have seen a couple of pictures where both spare wheels are piled up on there. Um, yeah, not sure that that's uh, the way to go. There's only one or two I've seen like that. So one spare wheel under here and the other one is going on top above the kingpin here. The, the winch for the spare wheel sits there can we all see that yeah sits there so it sits and the wheel will go underneath it there so that winch would be redundant if there was nothing underneath it so that's where we're putting one spare wheel and the other one is going on that pad underneath there there is enough room with the wiring but only just i only just got away with that the next bit there um oh, 
skipped a page is this assembly here at first I couldn't work out what it was and it threw me a bit because it A it was upside down and B it had these circular handles on it so it threw me a little bit I couldn't work out exactly what it was with a little bit of research it turns out that they're fire extinguishers they sit there oh, I knew that would fall off when it's all done it obviously fit there so they sit on that plate there okay and what threw me more than anything was the handle on the top the wheel on the top and not having a, a nozzle of any kind so what I've done is I fashioned a handle for the top the two of them so I fashioned a handle for the top as you can see and that's just a little bit of styrene and a little bit of steel wire to fashion the hose on the top uh, from the top and it, it would go into a bracket on the bottom there and as I say that let's see if I can get one in that fits on a little peg in the bottom there as such you can just about see him there yeah and of course it would be strapped on onto the, the side of the trailer so that's those <laughs> I was a bit stumped with it for a little while as I say they were, they were difficult to work out what they were so that's those simple enough to put together and because it's upside down you may be wondering what they are fire extinguishers and a little plate to hold them bracket to hold them the rear lights simple enough all goes together really quite easily all the, the, the diagrams up here however uh, as is my one I try to I've started trying to wire all these trucks up so I make a rough me on back sometimes I'm not going to show you these working because I've got all the wiring tapes up now but the four lights are in there and you've got two indicators two running lights and a rever and two reversing lights excuse me underneath I've had to widen this piece here as you can see and that hides all the wires in there I've got the wires and the resistors and that then runs down here through and underneath the the, the, the suspension arm the, the cross member along round past the chassis and up to the switch he's here and uh, the, the, there it runs from this here is a battery holder and I'll tape it up there uh, it's a homemade battery holder and it works really well tried it it works and cut a little piece of spring pop a little battery in there and the whole thing will run on one little six volt battery obviously I would take the tape off this end so that's that's the most of the wiring there back to the instructions if anybody wants to know anything about the wiring uh, let me know in the comments boxes below and I'll, I'll only be too happy, happy to tell you how I, I've gone about it and some of the mistakes I've made while I've been doing it uh, again really quite simple stuff the <laughs> The fire extinguisher is the correct way up this time. Very, very little again on this on this instruction page. The number plate I didn't put on until last. Uh, it says there, it's a, makes it look there as though the number is printed on the photo etch. It's not, it's a transfer. There's just a piece of plain photo etch that goes on the back and then you put your transfer on it. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it just it, it's a little misleading. Then you've got really quite a large snatch block that goes on on the front here and that's simple enough one to put together sits on there the reason that's there is if you want to double up the, the the power of your pull you bring the cable through round through that and then back to whatever you're pulling so it's a little bit heavier than you expected you can get twice a pull from your winch on that couple of little pieces that go into the cable guides at the top here again really quite simple stuff 
Then on to <coughs> step number 10, which is putting the, the ramps together and then setting up the, 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 the top of the, the swan neck here with all the winch, uh, the cable guides for the winch. I'll do, deal with the ramps first. They're really quite simple to put together, but it would appear that they want you to put the ramps like that, which is wrong. On this truck, the, the, on this trailer, the ramps, when, it, when it's in running mode, fold down to here. If you follow the instructions on the ramps, you only get them to there. There's two things wrong with that. One, on a British road, and these are British trucks, you have to have a long vehicle sign on the back. That has a red reflector on the, on the top, and this is yellow with a, a, a red border and black letters. I'm going to do that, no idea. But, that should sit flat, like that. And if you go as, uh, as per the instructions, when they sit on it, it goes like that. And of course that is doing two things now. One, it's partially covering the lights, which would make it um, unroadworthy. And two, it's covering the long vehicle side. So it's got to be set up like that. But, to do that, Again, you have to do a bit of jiggery pokery. And what you have to do is get the two hinge bars on, then put the two hinges on, get my big clumpy fingers out of the way, these two pieces, without gluing them, lay it down flat, then very carefully put that onto there and glue it while it's all, all in situ, without of course gluing it to the, the bar. What you'll find then is that it won't turn and go flat if you wanted it to. So what you then have to do is cut a piece, which I haven't done yet, cut a piece out of here so it, it goes down flat as a, as a ramp would do for loading. Other than that, they, they, it goes together quite easily and Apart from those two hinges that have to be altered. They've not put them on yet, obviously, because it would be awful difficult to to paint with those two on there. So take them, leave them off and then put them on when, uh, when, when I finish painting. So that's those. On top of the castle here, on top of the swan neck, there are several winch guides, which basically the, the, the winch cable comes from the tractor through these two guides here over the top of this one here through this hole here and if you remember earlier that piece there isn't on the instructions then through there over that one <coughs> and then down to the, the the back of the vehicle so you can drag your whatever you want on it and as I say if it's a bit heavy you wind it back through that snatch block and double your pull power. Simple enough stuff, but what I've also done is this pad on the top here is for the spare wheel and there's one under here. It's supposed to fasten under here. I put one under there to put the spare wheel underneath and the other one simply glued flat on the top here so that I can put the spare wheel on top of there, which is where I think it should go. So that's that. Um, Lights, it tells you to put your, your, your marker lights in on here, in, on this bit now. I replace them and put 1.8 uh, millimetre LEDs in. Tiny, tiny little things. What I've also done, and I'll, I'll explain the copper tape on the, on the back in a minute. When you put these LEDs on, there's a lot of light bleed on them. They don't just point out of where you want them, they tend to shine through the plastic. What I have found is that if you coat the plastic in sticky back copper, it works perfectly, the light won't come through the metal. So it works perfectly and directs the light exactly where you want it to go. So what I'm going to do here, tiny bits of copper here and here, and 
underneath there. So there's four of those all the way along, two on each side, and the wires come through through the, the, the chassis members and then again go to the switching mechanism and the, the, the power plant. Then <clears throat> you have two different uh, lights which are marker lights uh, for front and back uh, uh, here and they also go here which is on the next page. These two here. I'll come to those two in a second or two. These two are the, the, the white at the front and red at the back and it's a marker light, it's a front back marker light and the way I've had to do those again is to put them on and then a piece of copper over the top, I think you can just about see that copper over the top so the light doesn't spill out this way, out the side of the trailer so it's, it's on both and they again go to the circuit board that will spread the power the two at the front are the same, but they stick out a long, long way. And that's because the, at the front here, the swan neck's getting narrower as it goes to the, 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 the kingpin. So they come out on two arms. The two arms, however, there's always an however with this kit, isn't there? There's no part number on them. And I did find the part number. And like a plunk, I didn't write it down, I just cut them off and carried on in my merry way. But they're little, they're easy enough to find. They're a little straight bar with like um, a small pronged bit on one end. I did use them, but I, the only way I could wire this to get the lights in was to run the, 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 the LED wires across the top. So because I've done that, I've had to put an, an extra plate. So that plate, which is actually, um, I don't know if I can show you this, is actually, no, that's no good. Let's break one of these in half. Sod the expense. So a ramp goes up there, not as steep as that, nowhere near as steep as that. But if you're carrying two smaller vehicles, the ramp sits on top of that and you drive it on up along 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 and up to about there and that way you can get another one at the back here but that's what it's for that's why there's such a heavy piece of plate sticking out there and all I've done is stuck an extra piece of plastic on the top of it to cover my wires it's about a millimetre thick is all and that covers the wires up nicely when it's painted you'll never see them I did try painting it to see if I could see them when <clears throat> without putting the plastic on as you can see I put some green paint on there and they stuck out a mile so that, that had to be covered up so that's those again the wires come through on the inside there you can just about well you can easily see them come through on the inside there and run again back down to where the circuit board will be the PCB will be little hooks down the side of the trailer no problem at all PE on the side here and it's like a, uh, a little bit of checker plate that goes down the side went on really nicely I would advise using a slower setting glue than super glue though to put it on so that you get it positioned nicely uh, if, if you put use super glue and it sticks and you've not quite got it right you, you're stuck with it really so that's that, that's what I've done there on both sides uh, I, I use big ultra glue seems to do the job nicely a couple of toolboxes on the side go together really easily <clears throat> the hoist as we've already mentioned again goes together really easily paint that when it's when it's all put together and that's it that's the end that's the end of the instructions there's nothing more to go there done on the sprues there are several bits left <laughs> which is always concerning I've searched and searched there's a couple of pieces of PE and I've searched and searched I can't find anywhere that they might go can't find them on the instructions I've looked at the real trucks to see if I can find uh, pieces that resemble the PE that's on the sprue not there so the only thing I can suggest is forget about them that's about it what I'm going to do now 
Oh, uh, one thing I'll, I'll say, there's two extra guides. I don't know what you're supposed to do with them, so I've just stuck them down at that point there. The guides go on really easily. A couple of supports on the edge of the, the, the hump there. That goes on really, there's nothing complicated. A couple of little bits go in and out. And nothing really complicated at all on it. The wiring, to get all these wires in is a bit of a mess. It took a long time to get it all sorted, but it's all in there now. Hopefully when I put a battery in and connect it all up, it will work. Here's hoping. That is about it. If you have any questions, any queries, any comments, please don't hesitate, leave them in the boxes below. And it would be great if you could like and, sub and subscribe. Speak to you again next time. Ta-da!